Special thanks to these companies for being long-term partners of this channel. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Zach. Here we talk about overlanding and tech. And uh, today we're gonna be doing an install of a eight switch controller made by Oxbeam. They were nice enough to reach out to me and they sent me one of these for free. And so we're gonna be installing this on one of my friend's Subaru Outbacks. And uh, I'm hoping to kind of just go through everything that comes in the kit and how we're gonna install it in his vehicle. And uh, hopefully sort of following along with this install can maybe help you in installing this in your own vehicle. Um, I think this switch controller is really awesome. Uh, you know, it's got eight switches. You can get it in the blue or the green configuration. Uh, it's a lot cheaper than some of the different alternatives. And so if you did end up having issues with it, you know, down the line longer term, you could replace it and still be money ahead compared to some of the more expensive options. It doesn't have quite as many like fancy functions as some of the other switch controllers out there, but I think it does all of those basic like main functions well. So first we're just gonna jump into looking at all of the different components that come in the packaging and then we'll actually talk about how to install this in the vehicle and sort of the steps that I took in installing it. Um, this isn't really like a step-by-step -step guide, but I just wanted to walk through how I do it so that hopefully it might help some of you in figuring out how to install this in your vehicle. So if you like this kind of content or you like what I'm doing on the channel, please consider subscribing because it really helps me uh, to grow the channel to be able to make more content like this. And if you give the video a like, that also lets other people know and the algorithm know that it's good content. So uh, please consider doing that. It really helps out my channel. So uh, let's jump into just checking out what comes in the packaging. All right, so we, before we actually start putting this in the vehicle, I just wanted to lay out all the components that come in the box, just so I can show you everything. So I got the blue backlighted eight gang option, and this is the this is the eight gang switch that obviously people will know these mostly for. But here's the switch module. We've got all the stickers that we will put on this in case we are labeling it for whatever lights or air compressor or whatever you want. They've got a ton of different sticker options. Um, we have this black braided cable here. This is what's gonna go through the firewall to your actual switch. We've got the whole fuse panel that's going to go under the hood. We've got a um, hot and return cable here. And this um, hot, I think has a 60 amp inline fuse. I'm trying to remember, I think it's 60 amp. So, and it comes with two 60 amp fuses as well as some just other backup fuses. And then we've got some mounting brackets. So this bracket is gonna be used for the actual switch. You can mount this on plastic or whatever inside your vehicle. And then we've got this hardware here. This is for various things. I think some of it we'll use to actually mount these wires to the fuse box. Some of these things we'll just use to uh, use this mounting hardware for the actual switch buttons. Uh, it just kind of depends on what we're going to do here. And then I, I don't know if we're gonna actually use that bracket, so that's why I say that. Uh, and then this bag here just comes with an inline fuse. This is what we're gonna use with this red wire so we can tap into the ignition of the vehicle. That's what's gonna turn this on. And then we have a big piece of red and black heat shrink here. I presume this is gonna be so that we can insulate these connections on the actual fuse box. So then we've got some instructions, a bunch of zip ties, and then a bracket for your fuse box if you need to use that to maybe mount to the side of your vehicle or you know wherever you plan on mounting this under the hood. So that's everything that comes in the packaging. Uh, you're definitely gonna need some other tools and things like probably a soldering iron and a heat gun a drill, some other things like that. But for the most part, this is a pretty all-inclusive kit. All right, so as you can see right now, nothing is actually turned on. This doesn't have any power yet, uh, but once we turn on the vehicle, ignition turns on and now we, we've got the backlight running. I ran just a little plug to this, just like, a, a, it's a little teeny one before actually doing all the wiring. And uh, we've got it plugged in, we've got our light here. And so if you press the button, which it's plugged into number one, this is number one, light turns on, so everything's good to go. Basically, the, uh, the whole thing's connected. We've just got a, the lighting controller connected up. We've got the heat shrink around both terminals. We've got the Adafuse plugged in under the hood here. And then we've got the, the 12 volt in the ground connected to the battery. So right here is 
the uh, outer fuse we used. I believe it's fuse 22, the INJ fuse. So that's the one we're gonna use. And basically all you have to do now is just run this cable through the firewall. So I think the INJ fuse spot will work for this for most vehicles because that's what I used for my daytime running lights on my 4Runner and then on this Outback, that's what we're gonna use for the engine trigger to turn this uh, switch controller on. So I think that should work depending upon whatever vehicle you have. So that's what's going on. Now we're gonna start routing some cables, put this all basically nicely under the hood and uh, run this big wad of cable through the actual firewall so that we can mount up the switch inside the vehicle. So stay tuned. All right, so this has a 60 amp fuse and we put everything on top of the fuse box. So it looks pretty good so far. We got the cables routed pretty nicely, uh, but we also needed to have at least a little bit of slack. So when you take off the lid, you can. So we just ran these wires here and zip tied them out of the way. And then we ran a couple of wires back. One, one wire here is this braided one. It goes back there and down to a rubber spot in the firewall. If you see that right back there. So we ran the wire and zip tied it into place. That goes through the firewall up to the switch. And then we've just got this wire that dangles right here. This runs to the A-pillar lights. So we ran one wire down this bracket for the A-pillar, and then we've got another wire going through the hood. Pops out on the other side to this A-pillar light. So, and then obviously there's just the A-pillar mounted on the hood bracket. My buddy wanted to run a set of last fit pods just like I had, so we're installing them. So right now the light is just sitting on top of the steering wheel because we haven't got the mount yet, but basically we're just going, we ran the wire through the fire wall and up right next to the steering wheel. It's all zip tied out of the way, but then we're going to put the switch right here on a phone mount and we're just gonna use like a double sided tape on this right here and put a phone mount to be able to run the lights. So it should be a sweet little setup on uh, the Subaru Outback. And uh, I really like how the install turned out. So, so I think this install went really well and it looks really clean. When we close the hood here, everything folds away nice. So, and then as you can see, there's our A-pillar light mounted up. Okay, so once you actually turn the vehicle on, your switch panel is gonna light up blue or green depending upon what color you buy. And then, you know, you can press any of these buttons and they'll turn the lights on. And then this will actually remember what you program. So if you, let's say, turn on your windshield lights and your bumper lights, and then you click off, and then you click on again, it remembers everything you had selected. So this is a nice little memory button if for some reason you're using this for an application where you have certain things turned on all the time and you want it to just remember it for a quick on and off switch, this is a really nice little feature in the middle. Otherwise, you've got eight working switches. This little white circle is actually a light sensor, so it will dim quite a bit when you, uh, when you cover that up, basically to show that at nighttime, this switch is actually gonna be a lot less bright and then during the day, it lights up nice and bright. So super awesome product, honestly works great. And uh, it doesn't have every sort of triggering feature like maybe some of the more expensive lighting controllers. Like it doesn't have a light trigger and it doesn't have like a special external trigger, but it has an ignition trigger and then it has this memory switch function. So I think it's really sweet. And for the price point, this is an awesome option if you're not wanting to ball out on like a switch pros or something because i think a switch pros is almost four times the price of this unit so something to keep in mind because this really has a lot of features and function that is uh kind of hard to beat for the price so if you made it to the end of the video i hope you liked that i hope that was helpful um i you know it's a little more technical and complicated to do these types of installs if you're not going to use like a pre-designed tray like i did for my vehicle so, and with the 3.6R engine in the Subaru Outback, uh, there's a little less space in the engine bay for actually doing this. 
Uh, not to mention the uh, pass-through grommet sort of uh, firewall area is just a little bit harder to work with on the Outback, but uh, I think the install went really well and uh, we were able to get everything routed and I hope this video was able to really lay out everything that comes in the packaging and uh, hopefully it'll help you sort of make a decision on on whether you want to get a switch like this or not. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, like I said before, consider subscribing and liking this video to help the channel grow. And uh, until next time, I'll catch you in the next video.